yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Hey guys, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the podcast where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. If you haven't done that already, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button to support it. Now let's buckle up and get ready. I promise you it won't be boring. In this video, we'll talk about a battery day clue that, although important, somehow went under the radar. It's something that Elon let slip as he ad-libbed and answered during the Q&A session. Drew then covered it up so that no one would notice, but to me, he just dug that hole even deeper. It's one hell of a clue I see there, a clue about Tesla's near-term plans for the energy side of the business, but very few people noticed. Tesla's energy operations are currently still small, but Elon often says they will grow to be larger by revenue than the automotive operations. It's obvious that he sees huge potential for growth. So let's now watch my good buddy, ace investor, Chamath Palihapitiya, describe where that growth could be. But before we dive into the data, let's indulge ourselves with something fun and play with Chamath a fun game. I'll give you a word you think about for a moment and then recollect what feelings the word gave you, okay? Are you ready? The first word I want you to think about is Tesla. Okay, now that you thought about Tesla, how did that feel? Ready for the next one? The second thing I want you to think about is Tesla bears and the reasons for saying Tesla will fail. Now that you thought about the bears, how did this one feel? Now let's play this game with Chamath. Watch Chamath's face closely when the interviewer starts talking about Tesla and then when he brings up the short sellers. There's a slight delay each time due to communications latency between them, but the reaction in both cases is priceless. Let me just ask you about Tesla, uh, because they had their earnings last night. Uh, they beat, um, you know, the, the, the bears would say they beat because they sold these tax credits. And how, how long are these, ta these credits uh, 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 going to be, you know, a sustainable business model? Tesla. Tesla bears. And the reasons for saying Tesla will fail. Now that we had some fun, let's start digging. Chances are you've already seen this interview, so I'll cut to the chase. But if you know what V to G and V to P and V to H mean, and would like to skip straight to the battery day slip, I put a bookmark to it in the video description below. What the fools will get right and what the bears will ignore from here is that this is no longer about cars. That that's the first wave of growth. And I think people are pricing in an evisceration of traditional autos and an enormous shift to EVs of which Tesla will get the disproportionate share. So now what is the bet? If you ask me as an investor who loves that company, it was in page four or five of their quarterly earnings release where they talk about the energy business. And they said a couple of interesting things. The first is that it was profitable. And the second is that they're also producing software now that allows effectively anybody to become a distributed utility. Now think of that for a second. You were talking about one of the most predictable, reasonable businesses that have raised hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars of debt. And what Tesla is going to do with their battery packs and their software is all of a sudden allow each of us to be in the energy business as well. Again, people will get angry. They will not understand. They will try to push back and they will be wrong. And what's going to happen is that this stock is now going to represent the totality around decarbonization and sustainability. So it was really great to own this thing around cars for the first four years. I did it. I made a lot of money. But now I underwrite this company as a bet towards decarbonization, towards deregulated energy, and towards the ability for all of us to become our little micro utilities. Like Elon, Chamath sees huge potential for growth in Tesla's energy business. Ultimately, he thinks Tesla will enable us to become micro utilities and sell energy back to the grid. But what does this mean? And how much is this worth? What is that market worth, Chamath? I mean, I ask this because since the end of March, we've seen Tesla add about $200 billion in market cap. So the question is how much of that was captured um, in that run and how much more is there on the energy side of things? And I'm glad you picked on, up on that because I think it was the second thing that Elon Musk said off the top of the conference call. He talked about that business, which really shows you where it is positioned in his mind when it comes to the growth of this company. I mean, 
to your point, and by the way, the way you frame it is exactly correctly. He has been consistently giving us the trail of breadcrumbs to understand this business. He had a quote unquote secret plan that he published on the web. Then he updated that secret plan and published it yet again. So all you had to do was just read it and put together a reasonable one or two pager to underwrite the investment. And you know that's basically what I did. I try to force myself in these big decisions to simplify things versus complexify them. And he told you, by the way, in this earnings release, the next big push is going to be around energy and energy deregulation. So what is that worth? Melissa, this is worth trillions of dollars. And the reason is because if you look at the debt stacks and the earnings potential and the regulatory framework that has allowed local utilities to thrive, it is measured in hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars. And if individuals can get the solar panels, buy the battery packs, and get essentially free software or low cost software, that allow us to collect the sun's energy and redirect it back into the grid, what you're going to see are utilities basically go upside down. And that was the class of debt that people would have told you is completely, completely the safest. And basically would be you know, guaranteed yield ad infinitum. And I think in the next 20 years, you're gonna see examples where that's not the case. So the way it's done is that Powerwall owners will let their Powerwall charge at hours when electricity is cheap and sell it back to the utility company when it's more expensive. If they have solar panels, they'll gain even more as they'll charge the pack for free during the day when solar is abundant and electricity is cheap and sell it back to the grid when it's expensive and needed the most. All this will be run through Tesla's AutoBidder software, an AI program that determines when it's best to charge the pack and when best to sell the electricity, and runs the entire thing automatically, splitting proceeds with the Powerwall owner. Since Tesla will sell electricity to the grid from many different points, we can consider it as a distributed utility company or as a virtual power plant. The market for utility companies is huge, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars. Add to the fact that a test case for the distributed utility concept is already operating in Australia and has covered its cost in less than a year. And no wonder both Chamath and Elon see Tesla Energy growing exponentially into the future. While Chamath sees the system operating through power walls, there's also another option of using Tesla cars as mobile power walls whenever they're charged in. A power wall is just batteries with electronics that let it charge from the grid, pump electricity out to the grid, or power a cutoff switch to disconnect the house from the grid altogether and supply power to the house. Similarly, each Tesla car also has batteries with electronics that let it charge from the grid, and all that's needed is to enable it to reverse the flow to supply power out to the grid and to operate the cutoff to disconnect from the grid if you want to power your house. Your Model 3 or Y could then perform like five power walls, right? Basically, yes, it's that simple. It's known as V to G, meaning vehicle to grid, and V to H, or V to P, meaning vehicle to house or power wall. To make things more confusing, V to G is also used as an overall name for all three options of the powering the grid, a power wall, or the home. It's clear that buyers might want the capability to power up their house in case of a blackout, but would Tesla want to provide it? It seems like Tesla has zero motivation to enable their cars to power your home through V2H. They already sell every car they can make, so adding the capability to power your house in a blackout wouldn't bring additional car sales at all. Yet it would brutally cannibalize Powerwall sales. After all, why would you buy a Powerwall when in case of a blackout, your car will do the trick? This reluctance would explain why two separate teardowns showed that Model 3 charging circle tree was set up to only enable unidirectional flow for charging the car. Sending power from the car to the grid or your house would require a change to the vehicle's charging hardware. So Tesla isn't too keen on V to H. But what about proper V to G, where cars take part in selling energy to the grid if Tesla becomes a distributed utility company? The signals they've sent so far have been mixed, and Tesla followers are divided between those who think it will happen and those who say it won't and isn't even worth doing. Still, the idea of powering your house in case of a blackout is tempting, so every year during shareholder meetings, the question reappears. Will Tesla enable V to G? I love Q&A sessions. They're usually less scripted than the event itself, so this is where the secrets tend to leak. First, let's see what Elon answered when asked about V to G. Vehicle to grid, we get asked that a lot. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that's important to note is the uh, vehicle to grid, uh, it, it doesn't, in, unless you have a power cutoff, like you, you need to cut off your main supply to the grid. Otherwise, if, you're, if you lose the power in your house, you'll basically just b backflow uh, energy to the grid. So just having a 
a reversal in the in the power flow does not actually uh, keep the lights on. Um, you, you need a whole separate system to cut off power to the grid. Um, and I think there's also the case that people really want the freedom to be able to drive and to uh, charge at their house. And it, it's obviously really problematic if uh, you know you get to morning and your car, uh, instead of being charged, it, it discharged uh, into the house. And then you, you, you sort of, OK, now I can either drive or use the battery to power my house. Uh, I, I think it, it's actually going to be better for people's freedom of action to have a power wall um, and a car separate. Um, and then, you, then it's, uh, you know, everything works. The, 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 you know, and you add that, you basically combine that with solar, either, either solar retrofit or solar glass, solar glass roof, um, and a local battery storage. So you basically become your own utility. Um, and then the, the, the car is, uh, you know, can be charged also with solar. Um, I, I think that's like the stuff that works. Taken at face value, this sounds like a no, B to G won't happen. But if you go back and listen to Elon's words carefully, you will find out that he didn't actually deny anything. All he did was say he's not keen on V to H and explained why a cutoff switch is required if you want to power your house from your car without draining the car's power to the grid. As expected, he thinks buying a power wall is a much better option. So far, so good. But Elon continued, and I think that here he possibly slipped. Uh, you know, that said, like, we can certainly do vehicle to grid. Um, and I think we can, like, we can basically enable that with software in Europe or something, right? So, unlike U.S. models, European Teslas are just an over-the-air update away from B to G. Why? Why did Tesla fit them differently? The explanation could be trivial, something like using a different supplier, facing different regulations, or Europe's different grid characteristics, but I don't think so. As Elon recently said, there are no coincidences, and in a moment, you'll see why. Back to the video. So Elon says something he probably shouldn't, and passes the hot potato to Drew to bury. My thesis is, based entirely on things they said, not on weak readings into body language and tone of voice. But having said that, notice how blocked and reluctant Drew sounds when handed that hot potato and trying to find a way to cover it up. And only when he's feeling confident that he succeeded, he gradually starts picking up speed. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, we are future generations of power electronics. We will be able to do this more or less everywhere from a like energy market participation perspective. But, but yeah, from a backing up the house and... It just so happens that the way the North American connectors are on all the cars in North America, it doesn't matter whether it's the Tesla connector or the, the connector that the other vehicles have, doesn't actually support powering your home. It's uh, unfortunate. So you'd need a, a, an additional hardware to do that. Um, but, but, but yeah, in the future, all, all versions of our vehicles will be able to at least do bidirectional power flow for the purposes of energy market participation. But even for that, it's important to remember that your car isn't plugged in 24-7. So it's kind of an unpredictable uh, resource for the grid. It'll have a value, but it's not the same as a stationary battery pack. Yeah, on, honestly, a vehicle to grid uh, sounds good, but I think actually has a much lower utility than people think. Um, I, I think very, very few people would actually use vehicle to grid. And we, we actually had, with the original Roadster, we had uh, vehicle to grid capabilities. Nobody used it. Yep. So he starts with, uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, and goes really slow. But since I'm not basing this on body language, you might ask yourself where it is that I see a cover-up. After all, Drew explicitly says that the connectors aren't compatible at the moment, and he doesn't see much utility in V to G. But here's the thing. The following points are just fluff that don't answer the question at hand, so let's remove them. He said that U.S. connectors don't support V to G. We knew that already, and this just confirms Elon's blurting that European connectors do support it. He said you'll need a cutoff switch from the grid if you want to power your house. Again, no news here, and the only thing it means is that if V to H is offered, you'll need to buy that cutoff. Nothing more. He said that since cars aren't plugged in 24-7 and their schedule is unpredictable, their value for grid support is not the same as stationary storage. But this only means that they do have value. And anyway, between you and me, it's pretty easy to predict when a car will be plugged in. And if large numbers of cars are involved, the statistics will be pretty robust. And he said that Roadster owners had V to G capability, but rarely used it. Small wonder when EVs were in their infancy and battery life was a huge issue that made using the battery for anything other than driving the car risky. So let's remove all this fluff. And what are we left with? Simple. 
Elon said all European Teslas have all the hardware required for V2G. Drew admitted that cars do have utility for energy market participation. And then Drew added that in the future, all Teslas will be capable of bi-directional power flow for the purposes of energy market participation. Boom. Mic drop. I repeat, without any ifs and buts, without stating that the hardware will be there like it is in Europe, but the software won't allow it, Drew explicitly said that in the future, all Teslas will be able to take part in the energy market. They may or may not be able to power your house, but V2G will definitely be a thing. Let's hear once again what Elon and Drew said. Uh, you know, that said, like, we can certainly do vehicle to grid. Um, and I think we can, like, we can basically enable that with software in Europe or something, right? Um, but, 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 yeah, in the future, all, all versions of our vehicles will be able to at least do bidirectional power flow for the purposes of energy market participation. I don't think they plan to say it. They probably wanted the whole thing to sound like one big no. But when you strip the fluff away, all I see is a giant yes standing tall. But what about the timeline, you ask? They didn't say that, of course, but here's food for thought for you. Consider the following points. 1. Tesla has applied to be a utility provider in both the UK and Germany. 2. The UK has already approved V2G trials. And 3. European models are an over-the-air update away from V2G capability. Now you connect the dots and tell me what you think. I pretty much wanted to end the video here, but after finalizing the video, I realized that this would be wrong. I always like to ask, wait, but why? So just accepting that Tesla will start operating as a distributed utility provider and use V2G in Europe is not enough. Before releasing this video, I had to answer the question, wait, but if they're entering the business, why aren't they doing it in the US? So I started digging and the answer was gold. Behold, FERC order number 2222 of September 17th, 2020. The FERC is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which oversees and regulates the entire American energy market. Exactly five days before Battery Day, FERC released a new ruling which enables distributed energy providers to bid in wholesale electric markets. This ruling is an incredibly important piece of the puzzle. As we previously discussed, Tesla's planned distributed utility operations are built around its auto bidder software's capability of timing the charging of batteries to when rates are low and supplying electricity to the grid when rates are high. This sounds simple, and in fact many Powerwall owners already do that individually without being part of a distributed grid. But combining them together into one large distributed energy supplier opens up the big box. Because if at peak hours Tesla provided power can replace power from expensive peaker plants, they'll get paid through the nose for it. It seems that until now, distributed energy providers like Tesla were barred from playing this game in the USA. But FERC order number 2222 opens the door to that. Connecting the dots from here is simple. US market Teslas will soon have the hardware for V2G, and I expect Tesla to follow its European initiatives and register as a distributed energy provider in the USA as well. That's it, guys. Please tell me in the comments below your thoughts about this. Do you think I'm right? Or did I miss a key point? When will Tesla become a distributed utility company and how much revenue will this bring? I would love to hear your opinion. And if you found this video interesting, please smash the like button to help us grow the channel. Also, if you have any topics that you'd like me to address in future videos, please let me know. I read all your comments and you can get a hold of me on Twitter at ConnectingOdots. Thanks for watching.